I've been making quite a few modify stacking videos recently, and while I've been doing that, one country continued to stand out to me. One country which turns up in the places you would really not expect it to turn up. Port defense, it's there. Land maintenance reduction, it's there for some reason. Discipline and morale stacking as potentials, it's got both of them covered in the same mission tree. Remarkably, for quite a while, I also assumed that this mission tree I wouldn't have access to if I'm doing something like native ideas. Since I assume this mission tree is tied to not a formable, a country that just starts with it, and certainly there is a country that starts with this mission tree, but there'd be no way of getting it if you're not, you know, starting as the country. However, I was wrong. Turns out there is a formable that has access to this mission tree, allowing you to gain access to a lot of these overpowered features, which remarkably this mission tree is definitely up there for one of the most broken things in this game, and quite surprisingly was not added in any of our recent updates. This country definitely warrants a pit stop if you're playing in the area in terms of just forming this country and picking up some end of the game buffs. It's practically worse than almost any situation since the modifiers you get out of it are frankly on another level. So what country am I on about? Well, the country that starts with this mission tree is actually Lubeck because the mission tree that we're looking at is the Hanseatic mission tree. I have loaded up into Lubeck here for the purposes of demonstration and certainly Lubeck presents a very interesting way of playing this tag on its own. However, the Hansa is a formable. You can form the Hansa and gain access to this mission tree itself. What's best about the Hansa is it's also not an end tag, allowing you to do things like Hansa into Prussia, Hansa into Netherlands if you're feeling like it, genuinely just the world is your oyster. That car, oh okay it's, it's going now, All right, that was you got really confused there for a minute. I hope the horse is okay. Um, let's get into the missions. So let's start going through what we have here. Nothing too remarkable on your opening missions. You get some national manpower modifier, the usual get some permanent claims, you know, get some accepted cultures. But we'll start with the Imperial Legions right off the bat on the left. Um, if you are going for Emperorship or Austria, the current Emperor, is happy with you and you get some allies, then get a diplomat advisor, you can just gain trust with Austria, and this is pretty strong. Uh, it basically allows you to call in the Emperor if you pick them up as an ally with this trust into a couple free wars, which is pretty powerful in terms of your early game expansion abilities. But this is just the icing on the cake, this is your kind of starting sprinkle into where this mission tree goes, because this, while on its own is quite strong, is powerful, it's nothing to write home about, this is just decently good. It's also just the first thing on your mission tree you're basically looking at. The next main thing we're going to be taking a look at is safeguarding the Salt Road. If you conquer three people and, um, yeah, basically conquer three people or even vassalize them and get yourself to force them from earlier, uh, you can get monthly admin power plus one for 15 years, which is really strong. <laughs> Let's be clear here, this is incredibly powerful. But what also comes in here is if you have Hamburg at 160 opinion, you gain 2% dev cost reduction, and this is to your entire country for 20 years, and it's 2% per trade league member, including yourself. So at the start, you have four league members plus yourself, so that's 10%. If you get more people in your league, and you're going to notice this, a lot of this mission tree is all about squeezing people into your league, which you should absolutely be doing. That's just going to become a better bonus. And it's global. It's for your entire country. You can get like 10% dev cost modifier, which is really strong. Sorry, it's not dev cost modifier. It is just about dev cost. But still, 10% dev cost is really quite powerful. Nothing to be sniffed at. And this is probably where we start getting, getting the ball rolling in terms of our other poweredness of this mission tree. Here, with bypassing the sound hole, we move the sound hole into our capital. Now, the sound hole, for those unaware, gives you 20 local trade power. Moving it into our capital, which is Oregon Estuary Entry Port, is really good. That local trade power is going to be stacking quite nicely with the plus 20% local trade power from, you know, the sound hole. So our capital becomes even better than it already is. And let's bear in mind, it's farmland, so it's quite nice for deving, especially when you get the entry port, entry port upgraded. And now let's take a look at the mission that makes this country turn up every single time I you know, look through the game code, trying to identify more sources of obscure modifiers for the sake of finding a YouTube video. Appoint War Minister. Now this requires you to do your previous stuff, you know, go into Prussia, kill the Net uh, kill Denmark, um, you know, have some trade power and stuff. But the way this mission works is that you will need to get a military advisor of skill level 3. 
But there's a set amount of military devices. There's a morale guy, there's this guy, etc. When you also have 60 arm professionalism and 80 army tradition, which is quite doable, and you have a reasonable amount of development, 350, not too major, but it's something to be scoffed at, as well as finishing either quality offensive or quantity. Sounds like a list, but frankly, this is something you'd be normally doing. Maybe outside the idea groups in single player, but everything else on this list is something you're going to be just doing if you're playing the game well. You're going to get a dynamic reward. Based on the advisor you have hired, you're going to get one of these. If you've hired a morale advisor, here's 15 morale, aka the buff from French Elan, just permanently here's 15 morale. Bear in mind, this isn't an end tag. You can go ahead and form Prussia. Or... Oh. Maybe you want to go and form Russia instead. Maybe you're going for a massive land force limit stacking run. Hint, hint, cough, cough, one of the things I'm also planning on. Well, would you look at that? Lubeck comes up again with 25 land force limit modifier. Maybe you're stacking max discipline. Well, make sure you make a quick piss up in the hands of to pick up 5 discipline. People would people would form Morocco for 2.5 discipline, and that was way out of the way. And there's just 5% here sitting 4 tiles. Not even 4, 3 tiles from the capital of Prussia. There is a 5% discipline at the end of the game, three tiles from the capital of the country that famously stacks discipline the whole time. It's just there, and no one's talking about this. For the record, I haven't seen a single, like, YouTube video, correct me if I'm wrong, or anywhere on Reddit or anything, people talking about how overpowered the Hansa is. Speaking of being overpowered, minus 25% reinforced cost, as well as 33% reinforced speed, is absolutely massive. 33% reinforced speed means that a unit reduced to zero strength recovers... 100, 100 a month, so it takes 10 months for it to recover fully. If you have 33% reinforced speed, that means that that unit now recovers 133 manpower a month. So you, now you're completing a full set of recovery in 7 months, saving you 3 months in terms of full recovery from nothing. If you also stack this with defensive ideas, which include 33% reinforced speed in them, not only are your reinforcements significantly cheaper, you're also recovering 166 a month. And that is pretty ridiculous, because with a recovery of 166 a month, you achieve a full recovery in 6 months. Well, it's actually 6.02 months, you don't you don't recover all 1,000 stack, you, you recover 996 men, so you, your regiment will technically be 4 men short. But you get the point. You're saving 4 months, so you have like a practical 40% discount on how long it takes you to go from a 0 stack to a full 1k stack on each one of your units. That reinforcement speed is massive, and that reinforcement cost is also going to come in a lot during your MP builds. Speaking of MP builds, here's 25% national manpower. This is practically the buff from quantity. Now, quantity got changed to make it less egregious, but there's 25% national manpower. And then it keeps going. Here's another land maintenance modifier reduction of 10%, which is absolutely massive. It's quite hard to get it yourself. As well as another minus 5 regiment cost, which is just to, in case the minus 10 land maintenance was nothing to be scoffed at. And again, this would have been great for the fort video, I just didn't realise that you could form the Hansa to get access to this mission tree. There's another 25 fort defence. Now, Switzerland, the country famous for its incredible forts, gets 10. This tag, Lübeck, gets 25 if you get a fort defence advisor. This mission here alone is frankly ridiculous, but it's just there. I don't know who coded this, I don't know how this got approved, but... The fact that Hansa isn't in any form an end tag is concerning. Like, genuinely, I think this mission alone qualifies for Hansa to be moved up an end tag. But that's that. And the best part is, as you may notice by the video length, we're not done. This mission tree keeps getting better. See, we may have stacked a lot of dev cost reductions on Lubeck, we may have made an insane, you know, center of trade and the usual, but one thing is missing. The trade good on it is absolutely god awful, naval supplies. There is some hope and prayers. If you do spawn the printing press, you can uh, make it the center of the bookmark and turn it to paper, which is a good start. But you know what is better than paper? A trade good that, uh, you know, maybe goes for 40 ducats instead of two. And yes, you've guessed it. See, Lubeck has this wonderful mission here. We need to develop the mineral trade. It's not trivial to keep up. You need to get an admin skill of six, which honestly is a lot easier on the Republic. And, uh, or get economic ideas or finish your gun reforms, which means, you know, takes you a while. And then you need to either have an ally who produces gold, or grab a gold-producing province. Or, you know, have 150 opinion of Gosta while then you're a trade league. If you do any of that, um, not only do you get 6 development on Lubeck, because why not, you just get gold on Lubeck. 
just, you, you just get gold on Lubeck. Uh, quick intermission by me in later testing. Uh, develop the middle trade uh, gives you the gold on your capital. Uh, you want to make London a literal gold mine? Uh, you just, just go for it. I, I mean, what? Why would you ever bother stopping this kind of thing? I mean, of course, Lubeck is amazing, but why not London? Why not make gold be produced in London? I uh, just... The best part about this, of course, is that Lubeckers get the valuable mineral abundance. So, that is tied to Lubeck. But your capital is the one that gets gold. So you can literally get gold in any province you want with this mission tree. Just to really rub it in on how stupidly broken this is. Uh, intermission over, enjoy the rest of the video. And to add absolute insult to injury, not only is the local gold depletion chance of Lubeck reduced by 25%, which is pretty good, you also get development cost modified. That's not dev cost flat, that's development cost modified, one of the most overpowered dev cost modifiers in the game. This is the base development cost reduction. This is incredibly insane. But you get 5% of it until the end of the game on Lubeck itself. This makes Lubeck arguably one of the best promises in the game to develop, and that is a high ask. You remember, we're competing with promises like Amsterdam, that not only have cloth minus 10 local dev costs as well as continue to be a farmland, and also have an entry port. Amsterdam also has a, has a decision you can press for minus 50 dev costs on Amsterdam, at the cost of some military power, I believe, or is it some military power? I'm not sure, but either way, you can get minus 50 dev cost here, which made Amsterdam probably the best province in the game to dev until you start giving Lubeck a minus 5% local development cost modifier. At this point, you're starting to push Lubeck to compete with conventionally accepted the best province to dev in the game. And you're not exactly dev in cloth, an amazing trade good, don't get me wrong. You're dev in gold. See, Japan was considered quite overpowered because... Apart from all the other shenanigans, they also got a grassland gold province, which means that gold, which tends to spawn in really annoying places like mountains and hills, would be quite an annoying thing to dev, but apart from being amazing to dev. Lubeck, you get a gold mine on a farmland's entry port with a minus 5 local dev cost. It actually becomes obscenely easy to dev gold. It should not be obscenely easy to dev gold. But there we go. That's also just part of this Hanseatic mission tree, and that's what makes it so goddamn insane. The final thing that makes this entire thing just completely overpowered to really seal the deal, really close off just how completely broken these missions are, you have the Queen of the Hansa. If you've been looking at the screen and reading it, you will see that it's actually really obscene. Earlier I mentioned about getting all these people into your trade league, and hint you can do that without any aggressive expansion in an area that is predominant with issues with aggressive expansion. Germany is memed as an area where it's ridiculously hard to expand. It's not quite northern Italy, but yes, taking three provinces here is sometimes enough for a coalition. Well, this mission turns your entire trade league that you could have have like 15 people in, into your vassals, and they immediately lose a whole bunch of liberty design. You just vassalize like 15 people straight up, which is insane. On top of that, just to add insult to injury, I'm assuming by this point, because you've also popped this mission for six dev, You've been devving, this is the end, near the end of your mission tree. This province is going to have like 30-30 development minimum. Well, not 30-30 development, probably more like 20-20-20. But I'm assuming at least 20-20 development. So let's model that now. Now notice, it's giving you 70-70-30 monarch points. So there we go, I've got this province to 60 development, 20 of each. And if you take a look at the mission now, you're getting 200 of the monarch points. You're getting the development times 10 as monarch points from this mission. So you're looking at like 600 monarch points easily from this mission, as well as getting 15 people as your vassal. It's obscenely good. This should not be neglected. Thankfully, the crowning of the new queen event is practically mostly cosmetic and shouldn't be worried about, but getting gold on a farmland's entry, getting like 600 monarch points and 10 people if you did the game well as three vassals in Germany, and getting your choice of 15 morale, 25 forcemen, 5 discipline, a whole bunch of fort defense, huge manpower, or reinforcement speed and reinforcement cost, until the end of the game, and again, and nothing stopping you doing all this and then forming Prussia, is quite obscene. This, without question, I don't know why no one is talking about this, but really, if you're anywhere near the area, 
make your pits stop and form the Hanzo. These mission trees, are, this mission tree alone is just absolutely worth it, yeah, worth it. So yeah, I don't know what else I can say. If you're anywhere near the area, make sure you make a pit stop in the Hanzo and form this tag. It's just absolutely worth it. Even going out of your way for it in some cases. It's very hard pressed to find anywhere close to these kind of modifiers. Even if you have to spend a whole bunch of admin on stating land, you're actually kind of good to get a bunch of it back with the Queen of the Hands of Mission. Like, it's it's just good. I don't know why no one else is talking about this, but there we go. The Hands of. Truly the sleeping giant of this game. Well, it's a bit different to the normal content I made. I've just had to share this because, dear God, I am um, honestly quite sad no one else is talking about this. Hope you, I inspired you to try a Lubeck campaign or someone in the area. As always, I would recommend Dip Martian, and if you are playing Dip Martian, make a piss up in the Hansa. And if you want some ideas for a Dip Martian campaign, I have a admin efficiency stacking run. Just do that and add Dip Martian and add Hansa as part of your formal buzz list. Fun will be guaranteed for the whole family. But that is all I have time for today. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.